Hello and welcome back. I am Pastor JD and this is my wife, Pastor Amanda, and we are the youth pastors here at Grace OC Church. You know, in this series, we've been talking about Ephesians 6, the armor of God. And what I really love about this series is how we've been getting into some practical application of what it really means for us in our daily lives to apply the armor of God. Now, this past Sunday, we talked about the breastplate of righteousness, and we were reminded of how Jesus died on the cross and he rose again for our sins and what that means for us. This is something that we have been given. This righteousness of God has been given to us by Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. And there's nothing that we can do that'll, that'll take that away from us. There's nothing that we can do to fall out of that gift that God has given to us. But even though positionally we are made right with Christ and we are righteous, we still need to live a life that resembles that. Exactly. We need to choose to live right side up, to put on that breastplate every day. The breastplate is such an important part of a soldier's armor because it protects one of the most vital organs, the heart. If we don't put on that vital breastplate, we are opening ourselves up to attack from the enemy, from what other people say, from our past, from memories, from bad habits. We need to put on this breastplate so that we can live and walk in that righteousness that God has so freely given us. So tonight in your groups, we're going to talk about one of the core uh, critical beliefs when it comes to the Christian faith. You know, it's so important when we're reading to, to understand the context of the scripture and how it was written. And I want, I, when we're reading about the breastplate of righteousness, I think it's so important to understand uh, the church in Ephesus and what their culture was like when Paul was writing this letter to the church in Ephesus. You know, in that time, there were pagan religions that were around. And part of the initiation process uh, for joining those pagan religions was to remove the old clothes, to remove the, 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 the ties, the old ties, the old self. And it was symbolism when you would join as initiation into those pagan religions religions. So when Paul talks about removing old clothes, he's not talking about like removing your jackets. Paul's actually talking about removing uh, those, those things that were part of your old self. Mm. Talk, Paul's talking about removing those past sins, those hurts, those mistakes, those bad habits. Paul's saying that when we accept Christ, that we are to remove those old clothes and to become new. When we follow Jesus and we accept Jesus in our life, there is an exchange mm. that happens. We give Jesus our, our old clothes. We give him our old self. We die to our old self, as, as you may have heard before. We give him our hurts, our wounds, our mistakes, our pains. And when we let go and, and our hands are free from that, we grab onto his righteousness that he so freely gives to us. You're right. Because of what Christ did on the cross, God no longer looks at us for what we've done, what we will do, or what we are doing. Instead, he looks at us through the blood-stained filter of the yep. perfect son, Jesus Christ, the perfect lamb of God. Now that is some really great news for us because that means that we no longer have to strive for perfection to earn our way into heaven because God has already paid the price for us, already made a way for us. When we put on that breastplate of righteousness, we are accepting that freedom that he has given us. This is such an overwhelming truth, guys. This is so cool. Yeah, it is such a... Such a cool thing. And sometimes it can, like Amanda said, it can be overwhelming and it can be confusing. You know, I've heard people say, and I thought this myself, uh, you know, long ago, but that if we are declared righteous, if our sins have been forgiven, then, then we can do whatever we want. God's going to forgive us. Jesus has already died on the cross for us. We can do what we want and there's forgiveness there waiting for us. We even see that modeled in scripture with the Apostle Paul. He says, the things I want to do, I don't do. And the things I don't want to do, I end up doing. When we accept Jesus and we allow the Holy Spirit into our life, we are sealed by the Spirit of God. And what that means is God begins to pour into us to help us to grow, to help us to change. And that, that is resulted and that is resembled in our actions, in what we do. We begin to change on the inside and that is an outward, there is an outward expression in the way that we live our lives that sets us apart and makes us different. It's not necessarily the living that, that is what does it for us, that declares us righteous, that makes mm -hmm. us change. It's not the living, but mm -hmm. the living is evidence the living is proof of a change that God is doing way deeper in our hearts. And we know that no good tree bears bad fruit. Mm -hmm. So yep. when we fully understand the weight, the price, and the goodness of God for sacrificing his own son so that he, we can be viewed as righteous children of God, 
We want to live differently. We don't want to walk the same path. We don't want to do the same things. We want to be different people because of the goodness that God yeah. has shown to us. Yeah. We take that, that belt of truth that we talked about a couple weeks ago. We wrap it around ourselves freely and happily, and we allow God to pour into us. We allow God to change us, and we gradually take off those old clothes, those old ties, our past sins, mistakes, habits. We take those off, and we give them to God. Now, we want to let you guys go ahead and get started with your group discussion. But before you get started, can we pray for you? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for the righteousness that you have freely given us, Lord. We know that we don't have to strive. We don't have to work to earn this righteousness that you have given us, Lord. And we thank you for the sacrifice that you have given us on by giving up your life on that cross, Lord. And Lord, we thank you for the goodness that you have shown us in that, Lord God. We don't deserve it. Father God, I just pray that as these groups come together, as we talk about righteousness and walking in that, Lord God, that the discussion would be open, that hearts would be open, Lord God, that ears would be willing to hear, Lord God, and that our grace community would be willing to hear your spirit talk to them, Lord. We praise you and we thank you in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. We hope that there was value added to your life and that while you've been watching this video that the Lord has been able to speak to you. Mm -hmm. We hope and we pray that your groups, you, you grow closer together and you grow closer to God. See you later.